Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Kohler, and this is Nancy, one of our standardized patients here at Loyola. The purpose of this training video is to demonstrate an entire head-to-toe physical exam on a female patient, including a breast exam and an axillary exam for the lymph nodes. This training video should hopefully help you see how to transition from one organ system to another and how to put all the steps of the physical exam together in a smooth process. Uh, the purpose of this training video is not to show close camera angles and details of the exam steps. Uh, so if you do need a little more attention about how to do an individual step, I'd refer you back to the uh, prior exam series for that. Uh, we do want to pay attention to proper draping when doing the head-to-toe exam uh, and to pay attention to the patient's comfort. You don't want to uh, have the patient move unnecessarily in different positions if it's not necessary. The steps can be in any order that uh, works for you, so don't worry about doing them in the order that you see in your uh, IPM2 binders or IPM1 um, uh, material. Uh, the other thing I'd recommend is that you have all your material ready and laid out beforehand. Uh, for this exam, you'll need a tongue blade, a cotton swab, uh, ear and nose speculums, reflex hammer, tuning fork, uh, the ophthalmoscope and otoscope, blood pressure cuff, uh, a cup for water, a vision screener, uh, as well as a straight edge to check for uh, the jugular venous pulsations. So again, make sure you have all that equipment ready ahead of time. And of course, before we begin any exam, we always wash our hands, so I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. The entire time you are taking your history on the patient, you of course will be paying attention to general appearance. Uh, Nancy's 40 years old and she certainly appears her state of age. She's in no apparent pain or distress. There's no respiratory discomfort, uh, no obvious deformities or scars. And of course, you wouldn't verbalize that while you're doing a physical exam, but all the time you're going to be paying attention uh, to that. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and check the radial pulses, and I'm going to do that in both uh, wrists. At the same time, don't forget you want to be checking the respiratory rate, but don't let the patient know that you're checking the respiratory rate. And Nancy, your pulse is 68 and regular, and your respiratory rate's 14, which is both normal. Uh, and of course, the pulses are symmetric too. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and check the blood pressure. You always want to, of course, make sure that your blood pressure cuff is the right size. Uh, Certainly the width of the blood pressure cuff should be uh, at least 40% of the arm circumference, and it is. And the, um, the other part of the cuff should be 80% of the circumference of the arm, and it is too. So it's a good sized cuff. Just relax your arm. I'm first going to check for the, uh, the uh, systolic by palpation in one extremity. I felt the radial pulse go away, so I'll slowly release the blood pressure cuff. It's there, and I felt the systolic blood pressure come back at 110. So I know that I only need to blow up the cuff to about 130 or 140 when I'm actually listening for the blood pressure. Have the elbow fully extended here. And of course, I'm holding up Nancy's arm so she's not uh, contracting any muscles. Good. And I get 112 over 80. I'm going to go ahead on the other side and check your blood pressure on this arm too. Good, and I get 108 over 78, which is uh, normal. For 
the next part of the examination, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check the upper extremities. So first of all, Nancy, just hold out your hands. I'm going to palpate along the fingers for any abnormalities. And let me know if any of this hurts, Nancy. Okay. Any pain over the knuckles there? No. Any pain over the wrist joints? No. Turn your palms over. Okay, good. I'm going to feel along the forearms for any subcutaneous nodules. Now I'm going to be pressing on various bony prominences of the elbows. Is there any pain or no, discomfort? There is not. Okay, and just a little bit higher. I'm going to be checking for any epitrochial lymph nodes, uh, and I don't feel that. Okay, good. Next time I'm going to attack passive range of motion in the upper extremity. So just relax your arm, let it lay kind of floppy and limp. Good, and then come over, do the same thing on the other arm. And just let your arm be limp. Good, and there seems to be a normal passive range of motion. And Nancy, I'm going to have you do a couple things. Spread your fingers apart, back together, make a fist. Good, and arms in, arms out, and pull your wrists up, pull them up and down, and to outside, and then in. Good, so the, um, both the passive as well as the active range of motion appears normal. So next time I'm going to take strength in the upper extremities. And so you can grab my fingers and squeeze, pull me towards you, good. Okay, make muscles, pull in, good. Now push out against me, good. Have you hold your arms out, wrists up, hold them up real strong, good. Now put your wrists down, don't let me push out, good. And last thing you do too is hold your arms up, don't let me push down, good. So the strength in the upper extremity appears normal. Next we'll move to the, uh, the head and the scalp region. So obviously I'm Examine the head uh, just by general inspection and didn't see any abnormalities. I'm going to palpate your scalp, Nancy. Tell me if there's any pain or discomfort when I do that. No. no. And turn your head to the side. I'm just going to check your scalp, too, to see if I see any scaling, any skin lesions. I don't see that. Good. So, again, there doesn't seem to be any abnormality of the head or scalp. Could you look up at the ceiling? Can we check your conjunctiva and your sclera? And I don't see any icterus or abnormal amount of injections there either. So next I'm going to move to checking some of the cranial nerves. I'm standing about two or three feet away from Nancy and I want you to look at my nose mm -hmm. and I'm going to look at your nose and I have my fingers out in the periphery here. And I'm going to wiggle my fingers and tell me or point which side you see wiggles, okay? Good. Um, and again, you're using yourself as the test control when you're checking for the peripheral vision like that. Next, we're going to check for visual acuity. And here's my pocket screener card. And so I'll ask you to put your palm over one eye. Uh, do you have wear contacts? No, I don't. Okay. Or glasses? No. Okay, because you want to have the patient mm -hmm. have their best corrected vision for this. Uh, can you read that line for me? 63925. Good. And the next line? 428365. Good. And the next line? 374258. One more. Nine three seven eight two six. Can you read that bottom line? Four two eight seven three nine. Great. So Nancy's vision is twenty twenty in that eye. Can you change hands? Mm -hmm. Cover up the other. And why don't we actually use your palm? That mm -hmm. way, there's no possible way that the patient's going to cheat through their fingers. How about starting at this line here? Three seven four two five eight. Good. Nine three seven eight two six. Mm -hmm. Four two eight seven three nine. Good. So Nancy, both your eyes have twenty twenty mm -hmm. vision. And of course, as long as the patient gets at least half of the items in a given row correct, you give them credit for the visual acuity in that side. Next, I'm going to check the pupillary uh, response. So Nancy, look across the room. I'm going to shine the light at your eyes here. So the direct response is normal. Direct response in this side is normal. Now I'm going to check for consensual response by looking at the other pupil. Good. That, and same thing here. Good. So the pupillary response. Um, uh, for light is all normal. Next we're going to check the extraocular muscles and see how well those move. I'm going to make a big H in front of you, Nancy. Actually, keep your head straight and just move your eyes, okay? Mm -hmm. So look there, look up, and look down, across. And all this time I'm, I'm watching how that the eyes move and seeing that there's a symmetry of the movement. Then look in. Good. So all the extraocular muscles appear to be intact. Next, I'm going to go ahead and check for sensation. And to do that, I'm going to take a little wisp of cotton here. What I'm going to do, Nancy, is I'm going to touch different parts of your face uh, while you have your eyes closed. I'm going to ask you just to say yes each time I touch your face. So close okay. your eyes. Yes. 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 
Yes. Good. So I checked in all three divisions of the fifth cranial nerve on both sides. And you want to vary your tempo a bit too so that the patients don't automatically just start saying yes, yes, yes every two or three seconds. For the next part of the exam, Nancy, I want to check some of the muscles in your face. So can you look up at the ceiling and wrinkle your forehead? Good. Now open your mouth real wide. Show me your teeth. Good. And that checks for the seventh uh, cranial nerve uh, innervating mus facial muscles. Next, I want to do a general screen for your hearing. So I'm going to rub my fingers against one ear or the other, and you tell me which ear you hear. But I ask you to close your eyes and then tell me or point which side you hear. Left, right, both. Good. Okay, so your uh, screening of the hearing is, is intact too. Next, I'm going to do is ask you actually to turn your head and cough for me. <coughs> Good. And uh, I'm going to have you shrug your shoulders against my resistance. Good. And then turn your face that way. And again, I'm watching this sternocleidal mastoid retract. I'm turning the other way. I'm watching for that sternocleidal mastoid to retract. Good. And then for cranial nerve 12, can you stick your tongue out? Back in. Good. So the cranial nerves all seem normal. I'm next going to move to the uh, parts of the examination where I need some of my uh, equipment. And before I do the um, uh, ophthalmic exam and look at the retina, I go turn the lights down. And Nancy, what I'll ask you to do is to stare across at the wall. Try not to look at me. Uh, I know it's sometimes awkward when someone's coming close to you, but try to stare. Okay. Again, I want my eyes on her eye level as I do this. And I've uh, got the scope against my glasses as I come in. Good. And there's the optic disc. It appears normal. I'm going to come around the other side. I have the scope in my left hand to look at your left eye. Good, and that optic disc looks normal too. Go ahead and turn the lights back up. Good. Next thing I want to do is to look at your ears. I'm going to put the speculum on the ear, and I'm first going to just look at the, the external ear for any lesions. I don't see any. I'm going to put the speculum and I'm going to pull up, out, and back to get the best visualization of the tympanic membrane. That appears normal. I'm going to go to the other side. Again, I'm going to look at the surface of the external ear first. Pull up, out, and back. Again, the tympanic membrane looks completely normal. Next, I'm going to get a different speculum and look at your nose. What I ask you to do just is to keep your head straight. You don't have to lift up for okay. this. I'm going to try to avoid hitting your septum in the middle because that's the most sensitive part. I'm going to look straight down. As I look up, I'm looking at the inferior turbinate and then the middle turbinate. Come to the other side here, too. And look straight down. Looking at the inferior turbinate, middle turbinate, I'm looking at the septum, too, look for any abnormalities or perforations. And I don't see any. So that's normal, too. The next time, I look at your mouth. You get a tongue blade for this part of the examination. First of all, can you just say, ah, for me? Ha. Uh -huh. Again? Ah. Uh -huh. uh, hold uh -huh. it. Good. OK. Using the tongue blade, I'm going to try to get a good look at the gingiva, uh, looking at your dentition. And again, you, the students need to be, uh, don't, shouldn't be timid with the tongue blade to get adequate visualization. Next, can you touch your tongue to this side of your mouth. Good. Now the other side. Good. And try to curl your tongue up and touch the roof of your mouth. Good. And that all looks normal, too. I don't see any uh, lesions in the mouth or any problems with the gums or oral mucosa.